physicists already know most of the fundamentals of machine learning, without even realizing it. That's because, more often than not, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the core ideas in physics and those in machine learning. Take linear regression, for example. It's one of the simplest supervised learning models, but also one of the most foundational. What if I told you it can actually be derived from first principles in physics, specifically from the same logic that gives rise to the canonical ensemble in statistical mechanics? In this video, we're going to derive linear regression using ideas that physicists are already deeply familiar with. Before moving forward, if you are from a math-based field like physics looking for a data science industry job, I invite you to join our bootcamp. Here are the key highlights of the program. Most importantly, it's free if no job is landed. Also, there will be weekly, live, expert-led, hands-on project-solving sessions. Machine learning models can sometimes feel like black boxes, just fitted equations with no deeper meaning. Take linear regression. It works incredibly well in practice, but have you ever stopped to ask why? Now, if you come from a physics background, this might sound familiar. When a physical system is placed in thermal contact with a larger reservoir, the entire system evolves toward a predictable equilibrium. This is the foundation of what we call the canonical ensemble in statistical mechanics. But here's the surprising part. Your datasets behave in a very similar way. Imagine you record a video of particles bouncing inside a container. Now, turn each frame of that video into a row of a spreadsheet. The columns? They're just the positions and velocities of the particles. What you have is exactly what a machine learning dataset looks like. Physical systems follow certain probability laws when they reach equilibrium. For example, probability of the system takes an exponential form when systems stabilize. For machine learning, the question becomes, could the same laws govern the structure of our data? Will the same form of probability govern our datasets in machine learning? If yes, how does that probability relate to the equations we use in machine learning? If you're curious to see the answer to these questions, stay tuned. Let's walk through the steps and connect the dots between physics and machine learning. We start with a small system, call it A, in thermal contact with a much larger reservoir A prime. Together, they form an isolated system with fixed total energy. Let's denote the energy of system A by ER and the energy of the reservoir by ER prime. Since the total energy is conserved, we have We also assume that system A is much smaller than the reservoir. That means ER is much smaller than the total energy E0. So we can expand the number of microstates available to the reservoir around its total energy. From statistical physics, we remember that the probability of system A being in a particular state with energy ER is proportional to the number of microstates accessible to the reservoir when it has the following energy. To simplify this, we take the logarithm of omega prime and expand it using a Taylor series. The derivative is just the inverse temperature of the reservoir, which equals the inverse temperature of system A in equilibrium. So we get exponentiating both sides gives us the probability up to a normalization constant. This is known as the Boltzmann factor. It tells us that the probability of a state decreases exponentially with its energy. To get the actual probability, we normalize over all possible states, giving us the canonical ensemble probability distribution. The quantity z is called the partition function, and it plays a central role in statistical mechanics. It ensures that all probabilities add up to one. Now here's where things get interesting for machine learning. In a machine learning problem, the dataset is structured similar to the dataset of the container next to a reservoir in physics. If we video record the motion of particles in the container, each frame, which is a measurement of the positions and velocities at an instant of a time, becomes a row in the dataset. Also, each variable, like position or velocity, becomes a column. The same is true in machine learning. We choose to show all the variables of a machine learning problem with x1, x2, to xn. Since the system is in equilibrium, the variables fluctuate around their means, which we show with bars at their tops. Because the system has reached a steady state, enforced by its larger environment that act like the reservoir in physics, we can model the probability of observing a particular configuration of these variables using an equilibrium probability distribution similar to the one in the canonical ensemble in physics. The general form of the probability is as follows. Following physics literature, 
F is a function called the effective free energy, and Z is the normalization constant, often referred to as the partition function. Since the system is fluctuating only slightly around the mean, we can approximate F using a Taylor expansion. Here, sigma is called the covariance matrix of the variables, and its inverse appears as the coefficient of the Taylor expansion. Since the first term is just a constant, we can absorb it into the normalization factor. The final form of the probability is, this form of the probability function is called the multivariate Gaussian distribution, a cornerstone of statistical modeling. In machine learning, especially in supervised learning, we're often interested in predicting one of the variables, let's say y, using the rest, which we denote as x. That means we split the full set of variables like this. Now, we want the probability of y provided that the values of the x are given. This is just the conditional probability of y given x, written as. From this conditional probability, we can compute the expected value of y, which becomes our prediction for variable y, which we choose to show as y hat. And here's the beautiful part. When you compute this integral using the Gaussian form that we derived above, it simplifies to a linear function of x. This equation is what we know as linear regression in machine learning. A straightforward calculation of the integral above will show how the coefficients beta 0 and beta can be expressed in terms of the parameters of the probability function. So, as you can see, linear regression, as one of the basic predictive models in machine learning, has deep ties with some of the concepts in physics. In this video, we explored the deep connection between a physical system governed by the canonical ensemble and a typical machine learning system. But this naturally raises a bigger question. Why does this connection exist in the first place? The answer lies in a fundamental principle shared by both worlds, the concept of entropy. In physics, entropy is ruled by the second law of thermodynamics. In machine learning, it's governed by the principle of maximum entropy. And both essentially say this. An isolated system will evolve toward the state that maximizes its entropy. This is the equilibrium state. That means, these laws guarantee the evolution of a system toward such state. Entropy itself is defined the same way in both contexts. So whether we're dealing with atoms in a container or a general problem in machine learning, unperturbed systems tend toward stability, an equilibrium state of maximum entropy. And that's why we can take a general form of a probability distribution, expand it around this equilibrium, and arrive at the multivariate Gaussian as the most natural first approximation. But here's a practical question. How do we actually find the values of free parameters, beta zero and beta, when a specific data set is given? How do we implement all of this in a computer to make real world predictions? That's a topic for another video. Until then, take good care of yourself.